so talking about uh, the topic for the day i am taking basics of investments as i was saying that i would be to uh, talking about the only toppings of the your uh, ice cream but uh, samshir singh will talk about more details and about depository services so first in hand what is depository so depository is a a uh, place where you store your securities into dematerialized form i don't know why the enter is not working just minute yeah sorry uh, for the interference uh, so talking about cdsl uh, in india we have uh, two depositories one is nsdl and another is cdsl so it was incorporated in 1997 and the stockholders of cdsl are bsc and leading indian foreign banks uh, with that is hdfc standard chartered bank canara lic and many more and talking about the regional offices uh, we have around 13 regional offices with india uh, mumbai being the headquarter and it is very proud to say when i work in cdsl uh, to anybody i like to say that we were the first and only listed depository in asia pacific first and only depository to operate in gift ifsc and talking about the services that we offer um, always be assured if you are, uh, if you are availing any service from cdsl we follow standardized control uh, system and also controlling to all of these standardization quality control we handle it very properly and you may never heard about losing any shares because uh, we handle with utmost care so we have also obtained iso certificate into it systems and processes business continuity management system e voting process and also stqc certificate into e voting process so remember guys in india e voting is provided with uh, by, via very few people, like companies and cdsl is one of them talking about the current scenario uh, where we stand uh, we have crossed across 3 crores uh, bo account so last month you would have a flashy news about like on business news that cdsl crossed 6 crore demat account so it is a huge milestone and looking over our trend uh, we have actually in one and a half year or two years we crossed around from we uh, we crossed 3 crores then 4 then 5 and this 6 crores and we hope that we uh, also cross 10 crores uh, very soon so 4 crores more to go and we are situated in 97 percentage of pin codes why i feel proud you know people say that in america 50 percent of the people invest into stock exchange and in india only 2 or 3 percent people invest into stock exchange so when i see the news where people are now increasing uh, like they are investing habits into stock exchange i feel that we are developing somewhere right even uh, in a newspaper during covid there was a news where uh, women investors into stock exchange have increased to 21% so imagine people are taking it as primary or secondary income whatever it may take but then they are considering stock exchange so we are on a developing platform right uh, developing country with the good mindset to increase our foot into this particular uh, investment avenue and also talking about dps registered with us we have around 591 proud dps registered with us uh, working from 20500 touch points we have 16000 issuer companies registered with cdsl so as i said looking over all the trends and just in two years or one and a half year we cross 3 crores totally in total so imagine our company started in back so many year like 1997 it was 1 2 crores the milestone but in just this covid situation we had crossed so much of milestone 3 4 5 6 so looking over this trend i feel that cdsl is one of the largest growing depository across the globe with more than 6 crore demat accounts Uh, so i would be talking about saving as i said learn save and earn is the motto like slogan for global money week 2022 which is specially celebrated by g20 countries for you students to learn about investments to save and to earn right introduction to capital market and some thing about like right issue one of the corporate actions 
डूज एंड डोन्स ऑफ ट्रेड सर्विस ऑफर्ड बाई डिपोजिटरी एंड सम ऑफ द की टेक अवे फॉर इन्वेस्टर्स talking about need for saving so why saving is needed so always remember uh, you need to save for the bad weather so literal meaning is that uh, you may never know whenever emergency situations may arise and uh, you may have to uh, get money so if you haven't save for that emergency you haven't prepared imagine a person who always believed that the a bowler will a ball in that particular like a spinner will only spin and he never expected that he will ball a fast ball and he was not prepared right such a bad situation at the that that point so be always prepared for any in contingency they may that may occur in future whether a medical expense whether whether any loss into your family you must always be prepared for the, those situations right uh there is not always uh, people say uh, don't have only a plan b have a b plan if even b plan fails have a c d e f whatever it takes but you have to get rid of that problem freedom to pursue your dream career so remember uh, people do jobs and they are like not doing it from their heart they don't like the job and they want to quit and if they don't have the saving and they, so they cannot achieve uh, pursue their passion so take a example of your you yourself a class of 60 or 120 students uh, there would be people who want to do job or there would be people who want to pursue uh, further education into masters or there would be people who want to start their own start and that uh, like passionate about it so being passionate is not only needed because if you want to start your own startup you need a seed funding because if you have not put any money for example tomorrow i have a passion of opening a plant uh, like plant shop like plantation shop so if i have not put some seed money na then i will be not feeling uh, like if, even if i lost that money uh, even if the business is to, uh, like at a loss i will not feel bad because the money is not mine so whenever any investor in future invest into you he sees the seed funding what you have provided so draft your plan how much money you need how much time is left so start working from today pocket money if it is not resolving the problem start doing some summer internship imagine um, a person uh, like if you have heard about a successful uh, uh, mba chai wala story he had said a line where he said if i wouldn't have worked at he used to work at some uh, burger chain where he said if i wouldn't have uh, served tea coffees before i wouldn't have been a businessman so if a person who doesn't knows like i being the i will be just adamant and sitting at the seat of the owner what and i don't know how the accountant what are the problems that are faced by accountant guy what are the problem faced by production unit and i can't put them myself into their shoes how will i get experience right before doing this job uh, when i was into my college i did five different jobs so into some into research some into news uh, like uh, even i worked for toi and uh, i worked for call center also and many other different jobs so even uh, finance company i worked so marketing company so i wanted to know what actually i liked and then i knew, knew what i wanted to do so this all five jobs led me to this job so always remember doing job and getting experience from that is not a bad idea right because ultimately you are having a extra edge to your friend right you know something about the department so always try to do some summer internship get polish your skills because doing only bookworm thing is not um, like if you don't have any practical experience the bookish knowledge would would not let you anywhere right it is just the base and you need to use those skills on a right place and say uh, also for long term security uh, for example if people uh, like many people lost their jobs during this uh, covid crisis for 5 6 months the, uh, the physical stores were not into working right so how did they manage to do uh, survive that phase either by going to their village having a secondary income uh, at least they could get food right there or else surviving in uh, it's where they are with the savings that they have kept so it is all because of our parents who always tell us ki keep saving keep saving my parents always are 
uh, telling me on an, any Saturday, Sunday, if they see me going out for a party, they say, Deshma, keep on saving. This money you will need in future. This is because they want us to survive such power. Uh, any situation like we never knew pandemic would come nobody predicted right so maybe they are training us for this uh, such situations in our life and it is not bad right india needs to be a saving nation which our ancestor had taught rather than being an emi paying nation right saving for fun yes uh, we need uh, money for fun activity whether uh, it would be 150 rupees 200 rupees 300 whatever but uh, we may go out to see a movie. We may go out to have fun at a park. But then some money is needed or you may have, think about having a domestic travel or an international travel. So everything needs the money and you can accordingly save and plan your traveling as per your needs and your saving, uh, whatever you have done saving. And talking about marriage, yes, uh, we need money for marriage. We have a whole list of uh, uh, like uh, expenses incurring during marriage from langas to clothes, your guests, the gifts and everything and the whole food. It's a lot of, lot of, lot of expenses. Till last day also you will be running out of uh, things that are not happened. So India is known for a type of big fat Indian wedding and that is why a lot of money goes into it. So you may do law marriage or whatever like you can go legally, you can do married, get married, court married, but then depends upon person to person, but always believe me, I have uh, been staying in India for so long and my friends getting married, I never heard from them that they took loan for their marriage. Because in India, we, I, I guess it is very rare people would be taking loan for their own marriage. So 10 years, five years down the line, when you get married, please be prepared for such episode of your life because it is one of the dream for everyone, right? Leaving a financial legacy, yes, uh, we have to uh, leave a legacy for our coming generations or, no, or not coming generation, but at least for our dependents that are our parents. So, for example, my grandparents left some farm for farmland for us and we never sold that because there was an emotional bonding for it. He left some money. So that was a financial legacy that my grandfather did for us, right? And my father would also be doing. So I also thought he, if something happens to me, at least I take an insurance because at this age, I, I don't owe a big house or something so that I can leave them behind that. So at least I can take an insurance. So if something happens, they have the financial uh, uh, like support for them. And since not emotional, but at least financially, I'm there for them always, right? Uh, big purchases, yes, uh, they may be uh, like, uh, there is an urge of buying a phone. When you buy that phone, there is another urge of buying a bike. So our needs and wants never, never stops because it's a human nature. It's not like greed or anything or we are being over ambitious, nothing like that. Every human goes on increasing their needs will increase, their demands would rise. So accordingly plan your purchases, how, how much, like make a plan in two, three years, or you want a car or a bike, how much money, put that money into a mutual fund, three years. Then you want to put a, like buy a house, five years mutual funds, 10 years mutual fund. Do a plan accordingly. Uh, being a student, you can start with 500 rupees also, instead of wasting that money into a restaurant or a small burger chain. So please do that. You can at least save 500 from your pocket money at least that uh, this little money you can start saving. I know the, you must, some of the students would not know about this uh, avenue, but uh, then you can ask your teachers. They will definitely help you out with the confusions and everything. And talking about retirement planning. Yes, uh, we have to plan our retirement because we don't want to be burden on anyone else right in future because we feel uh, we are the generation who have always felt that we are like a free bird and we do not want to be restricted from anyone in our life and we do not want to be dependent on anyone in our life so we always wanted to be an atmanirbhar like person a self-reliant self-sufficient person so remember uh, what uh, the retirement planning would only be possible if you plan it perfectly because uh, the Retirement planning for my grandfather was something like 50,000. For my dad, it is like 50 lakhs or one crore. So see the 30 years after 
my grandparent uh, my grandfather like i'm talking about the uh, 30 years my uh, before my da- grandfather had a retirement planning of 50000 then 35 35 or 40 years down the line my dad had a retirement planning of 50 lakhs or 1 cr so now when i will think about 35 40 years down the line i have to plan accordingly because the inflation rate will go on increasing the consumer spendings will go on increasing so i have to plan accordingly so a whole calculation needs to be done and i have to come to a purpose then i have to do the plans how much money i have to save right from today to get to that uh, money the target money for my corpus so everything has to be planned and you can take your time then do whatever planning you need to do because we need a relaxed a uh, big uh, life after retirement and also we may have incur maybe incurring some medical expenses at that age so plan accordingly take your time and do the calculations i would just say that <laughs> introduction to capital market so capital market is a space where buyer and sellers meet together to buy and sell of securities it is divided into two parts one is primary market and another is secondary market so in primary market when the uh, it is consisting so uh, students remember capital market has stocks and debt both components so if in primary market the stock comes for the first time to the public it is known as initial public offering and ipo it is also known as going public because we, the company is going public for the first time it is raising funds for the people for the first time right it is diluting its uh, like Uh, this uh, percentage of ownership and getting funds from the people and making them the owner partial fractional owner so it is an ipo you may have heard in the newspaper about various ipos like nike paytm or the upcoming lic ipo just for an example so this is all about primary market so not only in stocks but even debt market for example bond may have introduced for the first time in the market which is via primary market okay so talking about secondary market uh, once uh, the nike stock uh, like stock came into the market uh, it got an ipo it got listed into stock exchange so now since it is into stock exchange it is trading uh, between the people like buyer and seller on the stock market platform and here the company is not involved it is totally secondary market anybody who wishes to buy 10 shares and anybody who wishes to sell out 10 shares it if they meet the terms and they can buy it is totally on or the algorithm on the platform and the things happen so this is about secondary market and not only in stock but also in debt for example a uh, debt market a uh, debt market so i would give an example for uh, i have a bond of like a uh, uh, 15 uh, years i have purchased a bond so in when 10 years past i saw property which i like the most okay so i felt uh, i am getting that property at a cheaper rate so why not uh, uh, sell out this bond in the secondary market and get that property i can do that uh, i can sell out that uh, into the secondary market and i can get that money so not only stock but also share market it is uh, possible uh, to uh, trade in secondary market talking about prerequisites of buying and selling so you may have said so okay you have talked about everything like we should invest into stock we should invest into mutual funds so what all things you need so i would say you need a saving bank account you need a demat account you need a trading bank account so what is saving bank, bank account is used and where you can open it you can open with it with any bank also it is used for transfer and receipts of payment demat account is you have to open with sebi registered depository particip- <coughs> <coughs> participants only you will uh, get the list of the dps in our website also or on sebi website also this is used to hold the securities what is trading bank account you have to open it with an sebi registered uh, trading member or stock broker only and all, it is used uh, trading imagine the uh, like when anybody ask you what is trade buy and sell so it is similar the buying and selling of securities take place via trading bank account so either you can have this account separately or you can have three in one account depending upon your needs and the brokerage you want to pay so three in three in one you can directly allocate the funds but if you have separate accounts you have to log into your saving bank account you have to allocate the funds 
and then go to your DMAT account. There you can use that fund and buy and sell. Okay. Uh, talking about trading and DMAT account opening form. So what all the identity proofs you need? So you can you have to provide one identity proof and one address proof. So for ID proof, you can have PAN card, voter ID, license, DL, passport, Aadhaar card, or any valid card which is signed by the state and central government, issued by the state and central government. And you need one proof of address, that is voter ID card, driving last, uh, license, passport, ration card, Aadhaar card, bank account statement, or any gas and electricity bill. You need to do one-time KYC, which is applicable to all the stockbrokers and DPs. And uh, always remember, it is mandatory by the government because uh, of any fraud or something. So they need to have your all six uh, things to be uh, uh, whenever they do your KYC, right? So please do your KYC. Talking about who can open a DMAT account, so an individual can open a DMAT account. Like me, uh, Reshma can open a DMAT account. I can ha also have two holders or three holders in my account. So I can keep myself as the first holder, my father as the second holder, and my sister as the third holder. Talking about HUF, Hindu undivided family. Uh, so here the karta of the family is the head of the family or the owner of the HUF. So whenever he is the uh, major, like he is the first, uh, he is the prime owner of the HUF account. Talking about minor, uh, so you may think that 18 years below can't, uh, trade or invest into stock, but no, uh, even a person who is below the age of 18 can buy and sell of securities uh, with the help of an guardian and both the people KYC is needed and corporate firm like private limited company or a public limited company can also buy and sell of securities. For example, CDSL can uh, buy uh, like so, uh, open a DMAT account. Trust, which is registered trust, can open a DMAT account. Uh, for example, Hindu undivided family can open a trust, um, like open a DMAT account. Bank and domestic institutional investors can also open a DMAT account. For example, pension fund company, mutual fund companies, or any bank or MBFC and uh, non-banking financial companies can also open a DMAT account. And also FPI. So you may have heard about FDI. So FDI is one of the rules, foreign direct investment is one of the route of investing into uh, different overseas economy. So similarly, FPI is also one of the way to invest into different, different, different countries. So a foreigner can also open a DMAT account in India. Talking about the uh, benefits of DMAT accounts. So you may have uh, uh, seen many movies about stock exchange, stock market. Uh, so they where they show that before previously uh, they were used to you know, DMAT account system, and here people used to have paper um, PC, physical certificates. Uh, so it was a whole lot of paperwork. So to ease this work, when India got into digital, digitalization phase, DMAT, uh, dematerialization came forward, and here uh, you can see uh, the securities are safely and easily transferred and retrievable, and it is easy and instant transfer takes place. You can also take loans against shares, that is known as pledging. Just like you take loans against gold or any property, similarly, you can also pledge your shares and get loans. Uh, you can also buy mutual funds in your DMAT account. Talking about the corporate action, as I was saying about right issue. So sometimes company feel that they want to issue some shares, but only to their existing shareholders. So decision is taken by the board of directors. And uh, they want to issue that right entitlement to the people who hold the shares on the given record date of the company. So rights are delivered on T plus two day, day basis. And how the record date works. So I would just give an example. Take an example of first March being the Monday, second as Tuesday, third as Wednesday, and fourth as Thursday, and fifth as Friday. And all these days don't have an, any uh, festival. Okay, it is Monday to Friday, no holidays between them. So if a person uh, like company keeps 4th of March as a, as a record date, so any person who buys the shares on 1st of March and a person buys the shares on 2nd of March and a person who buys the shares on 3rd of March. So the person who bought the shares on 1st will get the delivery of shares on 4th. So yes, he is entitled to get the rights on T plus 2 basis, which is the scenario which works in India. And talking, uh, the person who bought the shares on 2nd will get the delivery of shares on 
Friday. He bought the shares on Tuesday and got the delivery on Friday, but the record date was Thursday, right? So he will not be entitled to get that right issue. Similarly goes for the Wednesday person. So remember guys, on the record date, you must hold the shares of that company. Then only you are liable to get the right entitlement. And also remember, you can renounce your rights entitlement either fully or partially, it totally depends upon you how much portion of the right entitlement you want to renounce. Talking about services offered by depositories. So dematerialization is one of the service which I'm talking from start. Uh, it is like converting your physical certificates to the electronic form and remat is the opposite of it. So you may ask me why people go for remat since uh, demat is there. But remember, if any person who has three shares, four shares, 10 shares, and he does not wishes to have a demat account, so he can convert those shares into physical form and keep that PC with him. Okay. So it is very rare scenario, but people do it. Okay and depository do offer this service also. Talking about transmission and transfer of securities. So there is a little bit uh, difference between there here. So in transfer of securities, I transfer the securities on my own will, like voluntary I do that. So if I want to gift my father some shares, I will voluntarily transfer my securities to him, okay? Talking about transmission here, when a demand account holder becomes lunatic or is, uh, <coughs> insolvent or it's been dead by chance and it is proved by competent court. So the shares get transmitted to the uh, nominee of the demand account or the legal error of the person. Talking about transmission, it is all about the order of the names and shares. So changing one position to another, I will give an example. Uh, there is Sita Gita and uh, they are holding a demand account in the name of Sita Gita but then they get the shares in the name of Gita Sita. So just the order is different, but the people are the same. So you can, they can take the delivery of the shares in the same DMAT account. They do not need to open another DMAT account due to transportation service, which is provided by depository. Talking about CDSL digital services. So we all talk about going digital, going paperless. So there are such wonderful things that CDSL offers uh, digitally uh, to the people, uh, to the customers. So easy easiest is an internet-based facility. My easy is a mobile app. Smart is an SMS facility. E-voting and e-case, I will uh, uh, explain also. So talking about easy easiest. So easy, when you go to the uh, our website, there you can put your login ID and password. And from there, you can monitor your DMAT account or else, Using uh, easiest is a little bit edge on easy. Here you can also open it, uh, like you can also enter into de debit transaction, okay, using uh, login and password. And my easy is a mobile app since we are not prone to using computers or laptops because mobile is very easy to use, right? So you can download this app and you can get into debit transactions. And this here you can also. Uh, get the you can use similar uh, login and password uh, which you had used for easy easiest uh, so no need to have another login id password and also it is available in android plus ios uh, both the phones uh, both the uh, systems and talking about smart so i would always say suggest you to have a avail smart facility because if something from your account gets debited you get an sms alert which is very much essential to track if you have given your account to any broker and he cheats with you, if you have told him not to do intraday trading and he gets into the transactions, you get an SMS alert and you are alerted, right? Or else any uh, charges being deducted from your account, you get an SMS alert. Or if any fraud happens or your account has been hacked, you get an SMS alert and you are alert and you can block the account, right? So you can uh, solve all these problems via smart facility. And I would always suggest you to avail this service. E-voting, yes. So I said I will explain you in much more detail about e-voting. So previously, there used to be shareholders meeting. And the shareholder used to go physically to the shares uh, this meeting and cast their votes for the passing out of the resolution or rejecting any resolution. Okay, but then uh, since you see uh, we are uh, this COVID and all, we it is not easy to go to the place or even uh, if I am I'm holding just one shares of any 
company which is situated in somewhere very much far away from here, like Himalay or I can tell Hyderabad, I will be not going to that place, right? Even if imagine the traveling cost is more than the price of the shares. So I would not prefer going there. So e-voting solves that problem. So here you will get the stipulated time where you can say yes and no to the resolutions. And thus you can participate into the corporate uh, building of the company and thus the company gets the majority of the um, resolution passed by the uh, or rejected by the shareholders. So in short, we get the uh, insights of all the shareholders because remember, if, even if you hold one shares of the company, you are fractional owner of the company, right? E-cash is in consolidated account statement. Here you get the account statements for all your shareholdings across depositories or mutual funds, you get statement of accounts uh, on your registered email ID. So if you are uh, doing transactions uh, like frequently, so you will get monthly e-cash statement. And if you are not doing transactions on a month on month basis, then you will get six monthly account uh, statement, e-cash statement on your registered email ID. Talking about investor grievances, you can reach out to us on the given link. Or else you can also email us on complaints at the rate cdslindia.com. So students always remember any time in your life, if you get cheated by any broker or any middleman or any person, please reach out to the concern authority. It could be your depository participant. It could be us being depository. You can go to SEBI schools. All forums are open for you. You can consume a forum. It totally depends upon you. But remember, uh, it neglecting such thing that, okay, only 500 I got cheated or 1,000. But these are the, those uh, scampers who, uh, who, who cheat many, many people getting advantage of those people. And then they do turn out to be doing a lot big scam, right? So just, why not stop them from the beginning? And you could be one person who had let them caught by the people uh, authority and they are not into cheating anymore. So you have saved so many people. So always try to be a good citizen and always complain about any uh, wrongdoing or any fraud which you had uh, in, uh, like uh, seen in your life. Also, if any technical glitch is there, you can reach out to the concern authority and get it resolved. Talking about the uh, upcoming since seminar is going to end and Samshir Singh will speak now. So what now? So where we can see or get information. So any financial jargon or any issue you have, how to open a DMAT account, what is SOA, what is mutual fund, you can go to our website. There is in the right hand side corner, there is ask the uh, chat box, which you can post your questions and get the answers anytime, anywhere. And also remember, uh, if you want to attend such uh, webinars, not only in English language, but also in Hindi language or your uncle and aunt's regional language like Marathi, Punjabi, Gujarati, Telugu, Tulu, whatever. So uh, you can see, visit this link. So you have to go to our website. From there, you have to go to the investors corner. There you can see the upcoming webinars and you can watch not only in this topic, but different, different topics also we do webinars. And talking about, as I was saying, this is a week of uh, Global Money Week. So we have made many uh, articles like posts or uh, do's and do's handles or like games like today we posted crossword and last day we had done polls so you can participate in such interesting financial games and you can read out and also we make we will be coming out with gifts for you for a guide for saving or something so please uh, always uh, you can uh, have such uh, articles and knowledge and uh, like from our uh, from our social media handles from, uh, so we have we are also on facebook instagram twitter so I guess Instagram, many of the students must be there. So you can follow us there. Or also we are on Who, LinkedIn and YouTube. So YouTube also you can follow us at the rate CDSL India. Talking about the key takeaways, I would say that update your contact details into with your depository participants. So try, always try to update your mobile phone number or your address or an email ID number whenever uh, email ID, if it gets changed, and remember, guys, if your account is uh, like, uh, if you have updated your uh, mobile number, remember the SMS goes on your previous mobile phone number also. 
means the old phone number and also the uh, number which you have updated. So always keep in that mind that the SMS is also going on the old number. And also when your account is dormant, please always take care of such SMS alerts or something then keep uh, like your phone number always keep a track of it update your bank details in your demand account so any address or anything is changing in your bank uh, details please get it updated register your nominee details so you can uh, have three nominees in your account but i would suggest if you are not thinking of having nominees please have one nominee because it makes the procedures very much easy when something happens to the holder of the DMAT account, it is easily transferable to the nominee of the person. Keep the instruction slip book in your safe custody. So not only instruction slip books, but any uh, financial re uh, related, any documents are there, you have to keep in your safe custody. Also, if people have the habit of writing their passwords in diary or something, they should keep in the safe locker only. I would suggest that. Register and track your DMAT account through CDSL Easy. As I said, Easy is used for monitoring the DMAT account or via SMS facility. So if any debit transaction takes place, you get an SMS alert. Verify your transactions regularly. So you should regularly verify your transactions. But if not regularly, you must see the mini statements or anything on a weekly or three days basis. Because if any, uh, as I said, any transaction has taken place, or any fraud or anything has happened, you can see into your transaction uh, like statements or else if any uh, like hidden charges have been charged by your DP, you can always reach out to him and get a clarity on it, okay? Power of attorney. So if anybody says PO is very much uh, needed, please say them that uh, PO is a uh, power of attorney is an optional document and you do not wish to give them. Be aware while dealing based on unsolicited stock tips. See, one of the most important point in this slide, always remember anybody who is guiding you on nine o'clock at a television or a magazine, or you get the SMS just to exaggerate, or like it is in my pay double, but this is not the thing. Yeah, and even in social media, I have seen that so-and-so person invested 10,000 in this stock, and now he is valued to some lakhs and lakhs and lakhs rupees. But remember, guys, 10,000 rupees he had invested somewhere 15, 20, 30 years before, right? As I said, during my grandparents' time, and that money was a whole lot of money, lot of lot money. So don't get carried away because we were not even born that time, right? So we didn't have that opportunity. So always remember, you sh this is the age where you learn, uh, learn. So do mistakes, learn from it. Uh, it is no big deal, right? You only invest that money into stocks, which you do not believe that, uh, like, which is not used by you and you do, will not feel bad. Also, if you want to do less of, uh, like, losses, you can have a calculative uh, percentage, like 5%, 10%, this much is the loss which I will incur. And if I to go, it, it is going more further, I will sell out that stock. So such uh, is a, uh, such things you can plan and minimize your losses because, 25, 21, 25 is always taking it and just do go into the flow, learn about things and take advice from your teachers. Don't be a fearing person, be a smart, informed and wise investor. And I will end up this with saying happy investing and Samshay Singh Ji will explain more about the avenues, other avenues. So keep an uh, ear on it and any doubts you can post in the chat box or after the seminar, you can ask. Samshaji, you can take forward. Thank you, Mr. Shma. Shma, <coughs> you have explained about CDSL and equities. Now, we continue the second part of this session. And the topic of our Investor Awareness Program. But first of all, my name is Shamshir Singh. Certified Financial Planner and CNBC TV 18 Financial Advisor Award winner. हमारे टॉपिक के हिसाब से Investor Awareness Program तो हमें Investor बनने के लिए क्या करना होगा? Investor बनने के लिए हमारे पास पैसा होना चाहिए लेकिन पैसे को लेके हमारी क्या strategy होती है? क्या समझ है? क्या जानते हैं? क्या करते हैं पैसे के साथ? What do you do with your money? Save, spend या invest? देखा जाए तो पैसे को लेके हमारे पास कोई भी स्ट्रेटजी नाम की चीज नहीं होती जैसे ही इनकम जनरेट हुई सबसे पहले खर्चा कर दिया जाता है और खर्चा करने के बाद अगर कुछ बच गया 
तो फिर वो हमारी सेविंग्स हो जाएंगी और अगर नहीं कुछ बचा तो तो फिर अपने ही फिनेंशियल गोल्स इनके साथ कॉम्प्रोमाइज करना शुरू कर देते हैं जैसे प्लान किया होता है कि एक गाड़ी लेंगे 25 लाख वाली लेकिन लेने के टाइम पे फिर से सोचेंगे 12, 14, 16 लाख प्लान करेंगे वेकेशन पे जाएंगे लेकिन उसको फिर डिले कर देंगे पोस्ट अपन कर देंगे वन बाय वन अपने फिनेंशियल गोल्स इनके साथ कॉम्प्रोमाइज करना शुरू कर देते हैं तो फिर क्या होना चाहिए होना ये चाहिए जितनी इनकम जनरेट हो गई पहले सेविंग्स करें और उसके बाद ही अपना खर्चा करें और इसके साथ साथ जैसे हम लोग रेगुलर अर्न करते हैं वी अर्न रेगुलरली वी स्पेंड रेगुलरली एंड स्टूडेंट वो एक आल्सो इन्वेस्ट रेगुलरली हमें रेगुलर बेसिस पे ही इन्वेस्टमेंट करनी है जिस हिसाब से हमारी इनकम जनरेट हो रही है इनकम इंक्रीज हो रही है हमारी इन्वेस्टमेंट भी इंक्रीज होनी चाहिए लेकिन जब हम सेविंग्स की बात करते हैं इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की बात करते हैं तब भी हमारी सेविंग्स के साथ कुछ ना कुछ गलत हो जाता है एंड वट स्ट्रॉन्ग वेज सेविंग और वो है इन्फ्लेशन जिसके बारे में हम लोग सुनते हैं बात भी करते हैं लेकिन इसका इंपैक्ट नहीं समझ पाते इन्फ्लेशन नीड्स ऑफ योर सेविंग ओवर टाइम समय के साथ हमारे पैसे की वैल्यू कम होने लगती है एंड वट डज इन्फ्लेशन डू टू योर सेविंग्स अगर पांच परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन पकड़ के चलें और अगर आ, हमारी पॉकेट में एक लाख है तो पांच साल के बाद इसकी वैल्यू एटी थाउजेंड के आसपास रह जाएगी पंद्रह साल के बाद यही वैल्यू आधी यानी कि फिफ्टी थाउजेंड और बीस साल बाद ये वैल्यू सिर्फ पैंतीस हजार के आसपास रहेगी और वो भी कब अगर इन्फ्लेशन पांच रहे तो और अगर इन्फ्लेशन यहां से थोड़ी सी बढ़ गई तो ये वैल्यू बीस बाईस से ज्यादा की नहीं होगी और यही रीजन है जब हमारे पास कोई एडवाइजर आता है आके क्या बोलता है कि ये स्कीम बहुत जबरदस्त है हर साल इसमें इतना इतना इन्वेस्ट करो बीस साल बाद आपको दस लाख मिल जाएगा लेकिन एज ए इन्वेस्टर हम उस दस लाख को आज की वैल्यू से कैलकुलेट करने लगते हैं लेकिन वो तो हमें बीस साल बाद मिल रहा है तो बीस साल बाद उस दस लाख की वैल्यू क्या रह जाएगी बीस साल बाद उस दस लाख की वैल्यू अगर पांच परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन पकड़े तो सिर्फ साढ़े तीन लाख के आसपास और अगर इन्फ्लेशन बढ़ गई तो ये वैल्यू दो सवा दो लाख से ज्यादा की नहीं होगी और एज इट इज वट डज इन्फ्लेशन डू टू योर एक्सपेंसिस वंस अगेन पांच परसेंट ही इन्फ्लेशन पकड़े और आज पकड़ अब किसी का खर्चा सिर्फ तीस हजार है थर्टी थाउजेंड पर मंथ बहुत कम फिगर ली गई है तो पांच साल के बाद ये खर्चा फोर्टी को टच करेगा पंद्रह साल बाद 60,000 और 20 साल बाद 80,000 को टच करेगा और अगर इन्फ्लेशन बढ़ गई तो ये वैल्यू लाख सवा लाख को टच करेगी जो आज के 30,000 के बराबर होगी और देखा जाए तो ऑलरेडी हमारा लाइफस्टाइल इन्फ्लेशन हमारा एजुकेशन इन्फ्लेशन बहुत हाई है तो फिर इसका सोल्यूशन क्या है वो है इन्वेस्टिंग द सेफ गार्ड अगेंस्ट इन्फ्लेशन जितना जल्दी हो सके अपने इन्वेस्टमेंट को स्टार्ट करें आइंस्टाइन के मुताबिक दुनिया का आठवां अजूबा पावर ऑफ कंपाउंड जितना जल्दी हम अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट को शुरू करते हैं उतना कम पैसा इन्वेस्ट करके हमारा कॉर्पस बहुत बड़ा जनरेट हो सकता है और इसी स्लाइड में यही एक एग्जाम्पल दी गई है क्योंकि आपको दो विकल्प दिए जा रहे हैं फर्स्ट आपको हर रोज एक करोड़ मिलेगा पहली तारीख एक करोड़ दो तारीख एक करोड़ तीन को भी एक करोड़ चार को भी एक करोड़ तीस दिनों का अगर मैं महीना ज्यूम करें तो थर्टी करोड़ पॉकेट में आ जाएंगे लेकिन दूसरा विकल्प क्या है वो है आपको पहली तारीख को एक करोड़ मिलेगा दूसरी को दो तीसरी को चार चार तारीख को आठ यानी हर रोज ये पेमेंट डबल हो रही है करते करते नौ तारीख को दो और दस तारीख को फिर पांच तो कौन सा विकल्प बेहतर हो सकता है हर रोज एक करोड़ यानी कि तीस करोड़ तीस दिनों में आपकी पॉकेट में जबकि यहां पे दसवें दिन सिर्फ पांच सौ बारह रुपए तो ये कंपाउंडिंग का इफेक्ट ही है क्योंकि अगर हम कंपाउंडिंग के इफेक्ट से चले तो ग्यारहवें दिन एक हजार चौबीस बारहवें दिन दो हजार अड़तालीस करते करते जब ट्वेंटी एट डे आ गया तो साढ़े करोड़ के आसपास एक ही दिन में पेमेंट होगी उनतीसवें दिन साढ़े करोड़ और तीसवें दिन साढ़े तिरपन करोड़ और फिर से सोचिए अगर यहां पे एक दिन और ज्यादा होगा तीस की जगह पे दिन इकतीस हो गए तो एक सौ सात करोड़ से ज्यादा की पेमेंट एक ही दिन में लेकिन अगर तीन दिनों तीस दिनों का महीना भी है तो भी थर्टी करोड़ वर्सेस एक सौ सात करोड़ 
यही कंपाउंडिंग का इफेक्ट है जितना लंबे समय के लिए आप अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हो उतना कम समय में आपका पैसा उसका कॉर्पस बहुत बड़ा जनरेट हो सकता है लेकिन जब हम इन्वेस्टमेंट की बात करते हैं तो वट आर यू इन्वेस्टिंग फॉर किस पर्पज के लिए हम लोग इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं जब तक हमें पता ही नहीं कि किस पर्पज के लिए इन्वेस्टमेंट कर रहे हैं तब तक हमारे लिए कोई भी प्रोडक्ट कोई भी स्कीम बेहतर विकल्प हो ही नहीं सकते हमारा पर्पज जैसे रिटायरमेंट प्लानिंग ड्रीम होम ड्रीम कार वेकेशन हायर एजुकेशन मैरिज प्लानिंग ऑलवेज इन्वेस्ट इन एसेट्स विद यू स्पेसिफिक फाइनेंशियल गोल एंड माइंड लेकिन जब हम इन्वेस्टमेंट की भी बात करते हैं तब भी हमारे सामने बहुत से ऑप्शन आ जाते हैं जैसे म्यूचुअल फंड्स, गोल्ड स्टॉक्स बॉन्ड्स, पोस्ट ऑफिस इंश्योरेंस बैंक कितना इन्वेस्ट करें किस किस तरह से इन्वेस्टमेंट करें हमारी इन्वेस्टमेंट किस तरह की होनी चाहिए मेक योर इन्वेस्टमेंट वर्क फॉर यू एंड योर इन्वेस्टमेंट शुड फाइट इन्फ्लेशन फॉर यू प्रोवाइड इनकम वेन यू नीड इट डी एस एसेबल एंड यूजेबल इन पार्ट एंड पोर्शन grow in value and appreciate over time be realizable at fair value and low cost aur agar nahi hai to proper asset allocation is the answer ab ye asset allocation kya hai asset allocation just like a balanced thali jaise khana hum log har roz ek hi type ka nahi lete as it is hamari investments गोल्ड प्रॉपर्टी स्टॉक्स म्यूचुअल फंड्स, अदर एसेट क्लासेस में भी होनी चाहिए लेकिन कितनी कैसे किस परसेंटेज से किस कैलकुलेशन से वंस अगेन आंसर इज एसेट एलोकेशन एसेट एलोकेशन मींस कि आप हमारा पैसा हमारे गोल्स हमारे रिस्क प्रोफाइल हमारे टाइम के हिसाब से कितने परसेंट किस एसेट क्लास में होगा और एसेट एलोकेशन शुड मैच यूर नीड्स इन्वेस्टर उसकी रिक्वायरमेंट क्या है वो चाहता है कि ओवर टाइम उसके पैसे की वैल्यू बढ़े पैसा एप्रिशिएट हो तो विकल्प रहेंगे प्रॉपर्टी गोल्ड आर्ट कलेक्शन इक्विटी शेयर्स और म्यूचुअल फंड्स लेकिन दूसरे इन्वेस्टर की रिक्वायरमेंट क्या है वो चाहता है कि उसकी इन्वेस्टमेंट उसके लिए इनकम जनरेट करें तो फिर विकल्प रहेंगे बॉन्ड्स एनएससी केवीपी ईपीएफ बैंक डिपोजिट और कंपनी डिपोजिट और वंस अगेन म्यूचुअल फंड क्योंकि म्यूचुअल फंड की बात करें तो वो हमारे मैक्सिमम फिनेंशियल गोल्स के साथ फिट बैठते हैं क्योंकि म्यूचुअल फंड हर एसेट क्लास में अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हैं फिर वो चाहे इक्विटीज हैं बॉन्ड्स हैं डिवेंचर्स हैं गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज हैं गोल्ड और जब हम म्यूचुअल फंड की बात कर ही रहे हैं तो फिर हमें यह भी जानना होगा म्यूचुअल फंड क्या है क्यों है किस तरह से ये अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट करते हैं किस तरह से ये काम करते हैं इनके पास कितनी टाइप्स की स्कीम्स हैं ताकि इनको हम अपने फिनेंशियल गोल्स के साथ मैच कर पाए लेकिन उससे पहले हम ये जानेंगे कि क्या है म्यूचुअल फंड और म्यूचुअल फंड इज द ट्रस्ट दैट पुल्स द सेविंग्स ऑफ नंबर ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स हु शेयर ए कॉमन फिनेंशियल गोल एनीबॉडी विद एन इन्वेस्टेबल सरप्लस ऑफ एज लिटल एज अ फ्यू हंड्रेड रुपीस कैन इन्वेस्ट इन म्यूचुअल फंड्स मनी कलेक्टेड इज इन्वेस्टेड बाय अ प्रोफेशनल फंड मैनेजर इन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज और सिक्योरिटीज कुड रेंज फ्रॉम शेयर्स टू डिवेंचर फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट बॉन्ड टू मनी मार्केट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स depending upon the scheme stated objective a mutual fund investment gives the gives the market returns and not the short returns in the long term market returns have the potential to perform better than other assured return products our investment in mutual fund is the most cost efficient as it offers the lowest charge to the investor and how does a mutual fund work so yahan pe sabse pehle hum log hi hote hain हम लोग कौन एज ए इन्वेस्टर जिनके कॉमन फिनेंशियल गोल्स हैं पूल देयर मनी एंड फंड मैनेजर इन्वेस्ट इन स्टॉक्स एंड सिक्योरिटीज टू हेल्प जनरेट रिटर्न्स और यही रिटर्न्स हम लोगों को यानी कि इन्वेस्टर्स को डिलीवर कर दी जाती है एंड व्हाई इन्वेस्ट इन म्यूचुअल फंड्स क्यों इन्वेस्ट करें हम म्यूचुअल फंड में बहुत बार सुना है म्यूचुअल फंड सही है क्यों सही है तो फिर इसका एक नहीं बहुत से रीजन है जैसे प्रोफेशनल मैनेजमेंट फंड मैनेजर्स इनके आगे बहुत से लोगों की टीम म्यूचुअल फंड कंपनी के अपने रिसर्च हाउसेस किसी भी स्टॉक्स या सिक्योरिटीज में पैसा इन्वेस्ट करने से पहले ये उस कंपनी की इंटरनल और एक्सटर्नल इंफॉर्मेशन रखते हैं गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज मार्केट सेंटीमेंट्स इंटरनेशनल मार्केट के इम्पैक्ट इन सब के बारे में अवेयर होते हैं इसके अलावा एक लेमैन बंदा जिसने लाइफ में कभी भी कुछ भी इन्वेस्ट नहीं किया वो भी ये जानता है कम से कम कि सारे का सारा पैसा एक जगह पे नहीं होना चाहिए यानी रिस्क डिवर्सिफिकेशन 
तो म्यूचुअल फंड का हर फंड अपने आप में डिवर्सिफाइड है अगर आज एक इक्विटी ओरिएंटेड फंड में भी इन्वेस्टमेंट हो गई तो कम से कम 30 40 कंपनीज के स्टॉक्स या सिक्योरिटीज में इन्वेस्टमेंट होगी लेकिन इन कंपनीज के स्टॉक्स में इन्वेस्टमेंट है कितने परसेंट की होल्डिंग है कौन सा फंड मैनेजर इनको मैनेज कर रहा है ये फंड कितने लंबे समय से परफॉर्म कर रहा है इस फंड की पास परफॉर्मेंस क्या है रिस्कोमीटर क्या है एनएवी क्या है एक्सपेंस रिजो क्या है वाईटीएम क्या है एक्सेट्रा इन सब की इंफॉर्मेशन म्यूचुअल फंड प्रोवाइड करता है और इसी को ट्रांसपेरेंसी कहते हैं इसके अलावा कन्वीनियंट यानी कि बहुत कम पैसे के साथ इवन फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज पर मंथ हम म्यूचुअल फंड में अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं और कभी भी अपनी इस इन्वेस्टमेंट को इंक्रीज या वापस डिक्रीज भी किया जा सकता है पैसा तो इन्वेस्ट हो गया वापस भी चाहिए तो उसके लिए लिक्विडिटी आप जब चाहें म्यूचुअल फंड से अपना पैसा वापिस ले सकते हैं और इसके साथ साथ वेल रेगुलेटेड बाई से इसके ऊपर एक रेगुलेटर है और वो है सेबी सिक्योरिटीज एंड एक्सचेंज बोर्ड ऑफ इंडिया जो इंडियन सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट के रेगुलेटर हैं और इसके साथ साथ लो कॉस्ट यानी कि बहुत कम चार्जेस के साथ ये सारे के सारे बेनिफिट्स हम लोगों के लिए ही यानी कि म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टर्स के लिए ही अवेलेबल हैं लेकिन सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट स्लाइड म्यूचुअल फंड विच वॉन्ट टू बाय अ मैटर ऑफ रिस्क रिटर्न रेट ऑफ आपका अगर रिस्क बहुत हाई है तो रिटर्न भी हायर हो सकती है लेकिन उसके लिए इक्विटी स्कीम्स मॉडरेट रिस्क है तो रिटर्न्स भी मॉडरेट हो सकती हैं वहां पे हाइब्रिड स्कीम्स लो टू मॉडरेट रिस्क है तो वहां पे रिटर्न्स भी लो टू मॉडरेट हो सकती हैं वहां पे डेट स्कीम्स और अगर रिटर्न्स बहुत कम रिस्क बहुत कम है तो रिटर्न्स भी लोअर हो सकती हैं वहां पे लिक्विड स्कीम्स एक बेहतर विकल्प हो सकती हैं और जब भी करें गोल बेस्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट करें अगर एक साल का हॉरिजन है तो लिक्विड म्यूचुअल फंड एक से तीन साल के लिए डेट म्यूचुअल फंड तीन से छह साल के लिए बैलेंस्ड छह से दस साल के लिए Diversified equity mutual fund और 10 साल या इससे लंबे इन्वेस्टमेंट के लिए डाइवर्सिफाइड मिड कैप स्मॉल कैप और सेक्टर फंड एक बेहतर विकल्प हो सकते हैं और इसके बाद हम वन बाय वन बात करेंगे स्कीम्स के बारे में जैसे इक्विटी फंड इन्वेस्ट इन इक्विटीज एंड इक्विटी रिलेटेड इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ कंपनी लाइक शेयर स्टॉक्स सीकिंग लॉन्ग टर्म ग्रोथ बट वॉलोडाइल इन शॉर्ट टर्म एंड सुटेबल फॉर इन्वेस्टर्स विद हायर रिस्क कैपिटाइट एंड लॉन्गर इन्वेस्टमेंट फॉर इज लेकिन दूसरा इन्वेस्टर चाहता है उसको कोई ऐसी स्कीम चाहिए जो इक्विटी स्टॉक्स और शेयर्स में बिल्कुल भी इन्वेस्ट ना करे तो उसके लिए डेट फंड्स एक बेहतर विकल्प हो सकते हैं क्योंकि डेट फंड्स इन्वेस्ट इन डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फिक्स इनकम सिक्योरिटीज लाइक जी सेट कॉर्पोरेट बॉन्ड्स टीवेल्स एक्सेट्रा एंड एम्स टू अर्न इंटरेस्ट इनकम एंड कैपिटल अप्रिसिएशन एंड सुटेबल फॉर इन्वेस्टर सीकिंग इनकम एट मॉडरेट रिस्क लेकिन तीसरा इन्वेस्टर क्या चाहता है वो चाहता है कि उसको कोई ऐसी स्कीम चाहिए जो इक्विटी का बेनिफिट भी दे और डेट का बेनिफिट भी दे तो उसके लिए हाइब्रिड फंड्स इन्वेस्ट इन मिक्स ऑफ इक्विटी एंड डेट यानी ये इन दोनों का ही कॉम्बिनेशन है गेन फ्रॉम ए हेल्थी डोज ऑफ इक्विटीज बट द डेट पोर्शन फर्टिफाइज दैम अगेंस्ट एनी डाउन टर्म एन आइडियल फॉर इन्वेस्टर्स हुआ लुकिंग फॉर ए मिक्सचर ऑफ सेफ्टी इनकम एंड मॉडेस्ट कैपिटल अप्रिसिएशन और इसके बाद हम थोड़ा सा जानेंगे इक्विटी लिंक सेविंग स्कीम्स जहां पे हम लोग डेढ़ लाख की सेविंग करते हैं डिडक्शन फ्रॉम टैक्सेबल इनकम ऑफ अप टू 1.5 पॉइंट फाइव लैक्स अंडर सेक्शन एटी सी इन एस प्री डोमिनेटली इन इक्विटी एंड शॉर्ट एस्ट लॉक इन पीरियड ऑफ थ्री इयर्स एज कम्पेयर टू अदर टैक्स सेविंग ऑप्शन क्योंकि अगर हम लॉक इन पीरियड के हिसाब से ही बात करें तो इसके बाद हमारे सामने जो विकल्प आता है वो है फाइव ईयर बैंक एफ डी लेकिन उस एफ डी में हमने जो भी इंटरेस्ट रन किया जनरेट हुआ उस पर हमें फिर से टैक्स पे करना होगा तो ईएलएसएस एक बेहतर विकल्प नहीं हो सकता क्या क्योंकि ईएलएसएस इक्विटी लिंक्ड सेविंग स्कीम तीन साल का लॉक इन पीरियड है तीन साल के बाद पैसा वापस लेते हैं तो लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन का बेनिफिट मिलता है और लंबे समय के लिए अगर यहां पे पैसा रहने दिया जाए तो तो ये इन्वेस्टमेंट पर्पज के लिए भी एक बेहतर विकल्प हो सकते हैं लेकिन जब हम इन्वेस्ट करते हैं तब हमारे सामने प्लान और ऑप्शन आते हैं और हमारे सामने प्लान भी दो ही आते हैं और ऑप्शन भी दो ही आते हैं प्लान्स की बात करें तो डायरेक्ट एंड रेगुलर प्लान एंड यू कैन इन्वेस्ट डायरेक्टली विदाउट इन्वॉल्विंग और रूटिंग द इन्वेस्टमेंट थ्रू एनी डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर और एजेंट इन ए डायरेक्ट प्लान और थ्रू और विद ए हेल्प ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड एजेंट और डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर इन ए रेगुलर प्लान डायरेक्ट प्लान हैज ए सेपरेट एनवी विच इज हायर देन द नॉर्मल रेगुलर प्लान एनवी और डायरेक्ट प्लान हैज लोअर एक्सपेंस रेशो एज देर इज नो डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर और एजेंट इन्वॉल्व लेकिन जब हम ऑप्शन की बात करते हैं तो भी हमारे सामने दो ही आते हैं 
ये नहीं कि इन्वेस्टर चाहता है ओवर टाइम उसके पैसे की वैल्यू बढ़े तो ग्रोथ ऑप्शन लेकिन अगर इनकम कैश फ्लो चाहिए तो डिविडेंड ऑप्शन बेहतर विकल्प हो सकता है जबकि मॉडल्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग की बात करें तो सबसे पहले लमसम इन्वेस्टमेंट जिसमें इनिशियल और एडिशनल परचेज इनिशियल यानी पहली बार किसी स्कीम में पैसा इन्वेस्ट करना और एडिशनल सेम स्कीम सेम फोलियो में कुछ और पैसा इन्वेस्ट करना जबकि हमारे बैंक से जो थोड़ा थोड़ा पैसा म्यूचुअल फंड किसी स्कीम म्यूचुअल फंड की किसी स्कीम में ट्रांसफर होता है मंथली क्वार्टरली बेसिस पे एक फिक्स अमाउंट फिक्स डेट को तो ये एस कहलाता है सिस्टमेटिक इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लान जस्ट लाइक ए रेकरिंग डिपोजिट लेकिन किसी म्यूचुअल फंड की एक स्कीम से पैसा थोड़ा थोड़ा करके किसी दूसरी स्कीम में ट्रांसफर होना तो ये एस कहलाएगा लेकिन एक ही स्कीम से सारे का सारा पैसा किसी दूसरी स्कीम में एक ही बार में ट्रांसफर करना इंटर स्कीम से चीज कहलाता और म्यूचुअल फंड एवरी इन्वेस्टर शुड नो तो आपके पास सबसे पहले के होना चाहिए और इसको आप आज की डेट में ऑनलाइन भी प्रोसेस कर सकते हो और नॉमिनेशन कभी भी ना भूलें एक या एक से ज्यादा लोगों को नॉमिनी किया जा सकता है एंड मोड्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड रिडम्शन जिसमें हमारा ऑनलाइन और ऑफलाइन दोनों विकल्प हैं ऑनलाइन जिसमें आप म्यूचुअल फंड की वेबसाइट पे विजिट कर सकते हो अपने म्यूचुअल फंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर की एजेंट वेबसाइट पे विजिट कर सकते हो इसके अलावा एन एस सी या बी एस सी स्टार एम ए प्लेटफॉर्म वहां पे आप अपनी ट्रांजेक्शन कर सकते हो जस्ट लाइक ए कंपनी स्टॉक और ऑफलाइन वही ट्रेडिशनल पेपर बेस्ड हम अपने फॉर्म फिल करते हैं और सबमिट करवाते हैं जब कहने भी नेट एसेट वैल्यू इज द मार्केट वैल्यू ऑफ द ऑल द फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट Less liabilities and expenses divided by outstanding number of units for the firm. Our mutual fund N B is are published daily on M P website, mutual fund website and leading news paper. But then, 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 then इसके अलावा इनके टोल फ्री नंबर पे भी कांटेक्ट किया जा सकता है जहां इनके लोकल ऑफिस हैं आप वहां भी कांटेक्ट कर सकते हो लेकिन आप जब भी अपनी इन्वेस्टमेंट करें सबसे पहले इस बात का ध्यान रखें आपका एडवाइजर से भी रजिस्टर्ड होना चाहिए एसेट एलोकेशन डिवर्सिफिकेशन का ध्यान रखें गोल बेस्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट करें ताकि हम अपने फिनेंशियल गोल्स को अचीव कर पाए और खुश रहें इन्वेस्टिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच